We're not live. Sorry. We're trying to f fix something here. We're not live. So you changed the We're trying to Make the changes as Mr. Snall suggested and as I indicated my preference to be as being more in compliant with what was actually discussed at the October 3rd zoning meeting. Um, and I also suggest that we, um, my motion is, is that we add that um, video be included with the minutes. We have a first by Ms. Baker. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Pena. All in favor? That was agenda item uh, number two. The time is now approximately 7.13 p.m. Agenda item number three, would like to go ahead and open the public hearing on proposed amendments from the Zoning Review Committee regarding revisions to Chapter 50 of the Code of Ordinances. like to call up please the persons who desire to speak and thank you very much for uh, signing up here uh, Richard and Becky Smith if you could re-identify yourself for the audience and your address please Richard and Becky Smith 206 Ant Road Newton Nevada um okay how I have been, um, excuse I'm me, sorry. could you yes. get a little closer to the microphone okay. and move it towards you? Or um, uh, okay, is that better? Thanks. Okay. okay. Um, I have uh, carefully gone over each page of the draft for the short term rental, and I have some pages that are highlighted with things that are troubling to me. Uh, in some cases, they're troubling because they pose quite a burden on vacation home owners or potential. We don't have one yet, uh, such as my husband and I. Uh, there's some items that uh, pose burdens, and I believe I can say knowing this business and having had a rental home for eight years, uh, some of these things that are asked for are really of no use to the city of Castle Hills. They will not help the city to, to uh, give oversight of this new or uh, existing business that's in Castle Hills. Uh, one of them in particular is the requirement that we submit meets and bounds. And I had to Google that to find out what that meant. And that's... Uh, an boundaries with using a compass and a point of starting point reference uh, it would be much nicer just to ask for the address of the proposed uh, short-term rental and then it al also asks for owners to submit a deed this home was my parents they bought it in 1972 uh, I suppose there is a deed somewhere uh, again I don't see how that'll help the city of Castle Hills in its oversight of my property. Um, there's a number of things um, that are not required here that would be very useful to the city in managing these properties. And I'll just suggest some of them. Instead of sketches of the bedrooms and so on, pictures of the property. All of us have very well done, even professionally done pictures of every room, even the bathrooms. You get a good idea of what the property looks like with the pictures, and we have those. That would be useful. Second thing that the city would uh, could make good use of and is not required is a calendar of reservations. That way, you can look at any property and see in any particular month what days are going to be rented, what weeks or weekends. 
that could have several uses. The city could get a call from somebody on the street saying they hear a lot of noise down the street. It would be very easy to look at the calendar and say, oh, that property is vacant right now, so it must be another house. It will have to be checked. That could be very useful. Uh, the third thing that hasn't been required here is rental reviews. People that stay in these homes are very, they have high expectations. And if an owner doesn't have the place clean, if it is not well run, if the yard and the landscaping isn't nice, that'll be in the reviews. They won't get five stars. There's quite a few things that could be useful, and those are readily available. All these things are usually right there on the home away uh, ad that that person has, and so all of us will have a home away or Airbnb number. So I would say that that should be included, remove meets and bounds and things like that, deeds, um, occupancy limits. The way we ran our home for six, for eight years, this doesn't work, and here's why. When I get a call that somebody wants to come for a weekend because somebody's graduating from Blackland or something, I find out who's coming, a young man or woman's parents, a sister, an aunt, an uncle, a younger brother. I know the names of the people. I create the contract for that stay. So the occupancy limit are the people that, that I know are going to be there. Whether the previous group had two more people or two less is no business of the people that are going to be there on that particular day. So the occupancy limits are just those people. I don't, I don't want them to see a sign on the door that says maximum occupancy eight or 10 if they're only five. I don't want them to say, you know, well, let's call Cousin Joe. Then you can have more people here. That doesn't work. But these things were probably not created by somebody that knows some of the, the details of how the business is run. So I have several other things. So I would like to have the opportunity to sit down as owners to discuss what will help the city to do its job better without putting undue burden on uh, us property owners. And so a lot of this is fine. A lot of it is fine. But I can tell, uh, and I've heard, that it's just borrowed from another city. And so and I don't think that person really knew as much about the running of the uh, second uh, short-term rental as they could have known. I can just tell. So it can be improved. Um, by chance, could you leave those suggestions so that we can review them at some point? Yeah. Great, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Booth. Uh, next, please, uh, Mr. Wayne Carter of 125 South Winston Lane. Good evening, folks. I want to thank you for your community service volunteering. My name is Wayne Carter at 125 South Winston Lane. I grew up in this home starting in 1946. I'd like to say to you all tonight to save some time on this meeting, any type of home rental in a neighborhood like Airbnb is a total disaster. But let me expound upon that a little bit. I lived across the street from one that has finally shut down. When it started, I called up the owner that I've known since he built the home, Jorge Berto, about 10 or 15 years ago, and I said, Jorge, there's five check marks, five bullet points, on the Airbnb site that says you're not supposed to do. One of them is no parties or events. Jorge, every weekend, there's anywhere from 50 to 150 cars parked all up and down our street, and they try to make a deal with the Baptist Church to use part of that overflow parking lot. He said, Wayne, I know I'm having trouble with the contract. I can't seem to get out of it. Uh, I said, Jorge, you've got to do something. When you went onto the website and looked at this property, it was quoted as the most favorable party house in Bear County on the web. The ambience the backyard trees, the pool, the big open room. Yes, it's a nice house. I told Jorge, you helped this neighborhood try to maintain its character for the last 20 years 
and dealing with the church, the parking lot, tree trimmers we had to shut down that were starting a home-based business, one that grew to 11, basis charter school, the traffic. We've been, we have been locked into a battle about every few years for the last 22 years. Wayne, I'll try to do something about it. I'll try to do something about it. Then one evening during the summer, I've got both garage doors open. I'm in there painting, and I notice the party's filling up. I don't know who I'm going to offend tonight, but the, the occupants were the ones having to walk like this because their pants were below their whatever, and they would come over across the street and look at me, three men, and I kept started, they watched me at 8.30, 10.30, and 12.30. It's a matter of record. Called up the police dispatcher because I felt a little uncomfortable. <clears throat> they just stared at me. Now, why, why, if it's a party going over there, why are they looking at a neighbor across the street? So the policeman came up, found some problems or whatever, asked them to shut it down. But this went on, folks, for oh, a year or so. And as I said at the beginning, it was a nightmare. I'll be the first one to, to agree with a home-based business as it's defined, one, where you're working in home, it's not interfering with the neighborhood, your next door neighbors, traffic or whatever. <coughs> I don't, I don't want to encumber anyone from using their home where it's allowed. A rental, if you, we, Castle Hills, doesn't put the hammer down on any parties or events, period. When San Antonio finally, with all the pressure that they were having for the same thing, they came out last year with a lame ordinance. Oh, it assesses them like $150 or something like that. The city drives no benefit of taxes. Taxes stay the same unless that is incorporated, but then it's probably where you're ostrac not ostracizing, where you're picking on one person instead of all. But I just got into town an hour and a half ago. My neighbor told me about the meeting. I haven't even looked at the ordinance or the draft copy. No parties or events. Make it good for Castle Hills and make it good for neighbors like me that we don't have to put up with something like that again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Could please, J, I think I'm reading this correctly, J.D. Castellana. 128 South Winston Lane. Correct. I Hopefully I said that correctly, sir. You did it correctly. Um, I just found out about this probably about 20 minutes ago, and so I rushed over here. So I'm more of a witness as to uh, what happens with the Airbnbs. The Airbnb itself does the renting. They tell you there's screening, but there is no screening from what I can see. So here's what I witnessed. Uh, I guess for a year and a half ago, for probably about a year, this particular one got shut down. My home sits probably 25 or 30 feet higher than where the Airbnb was at. Every conceivable thing happened. So let's begin with what? A mother rents one, and here comes the teenagers. Why do I know? Because the mother is asking for permission if she can be in my driveway so that she can sort of keep the peace. Okay, there was alcohol and it went on and went on and went on. Let's see. I, as I recall it, there was a minimum of 19 calls to the police over you know, a period of time. Let's see, there was the, uh, the people from Mexico, I'm not saying anything bad there, uh, who came with rifles and music and everything in the backyard, one incident. Uh, another one was a, a group of uh, 
guys and girls are out in the back to playing poker. Whoever loses has to be nude and dive from the diving board into the pool. But that was just part of it. Uh, then, again, not saying anything. No, I wasn't even going there when it was earlier. Um, what else was it? Uh, it's nothing for there to be minimum of 25 to 50 cars. Nothing, absolutely nothing blocking everybody. Nobody knows where they're coming or going. People knocking on doors that don't have the correct address. It's nothing. I mean, it's just a common practice, constantly calling the police. Okay, the music. It got to the point that, to make it simple for the police, whether it be, I think the ordinance is 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night. Uh, those sound detectors, they'd come to my house so they could go to the fence so they could see what the sound level was in order to be able to uh, give them a violation. I don't even know if it's a violation to the people. You know what, I, I just remember the policeman who always say, well, it's really a violation to the homeowner and the person who actually owns them. The homeowners just kind of turn it over to Airbnb. They just want their check. Uh, and, and I understand it. I get, I, I, you know, it's for profit. It's a business. It's a business any way you want to look at it. Now, yeah, we can paint other pictures like as if we were in Europe and somebody lives in this apartment over here. They can monitor who comes in. And this is not Europe. That's not the way it is. The homeowner is generally away, nowhere near the property, has no earthly idea what's going on. And I think Airbnb takes care of the repairs and so forth. Now, this particular, um, th this is an odd one. This particular Airbnb, we're on a septic tank when you live over in our area. All of us are. We're all on a septic tank. I can't imagine we're going to tell you the times that the uh, plumbers were there, you know, to have to do repairs and so forth. Um, you never know. You, you, you have no, no one can control this thing. Whether there's 10 people there, I never saw anything. Where we, well, yeah, I did once in a while. Some hunters came in. They wanted to spend the weekend, you know, and they took off, and that was rare. Uh, but they behaved themselves. But the majority of the time, you can go back and look at the records. I don't have to invent any of this. It got shot, shut down because of that. There is no oversight. There is no control. Nothing. Zero. That's the reason for all of the police calls, and I'm not the only one that calls. It's just countless. I got caught a little bit off guard. I could go on with another 10 or 15 types of situations that took place there. Um, you'd have people that would come in. They'd rent it not for a weekend. It's just for one night is what it is. They're gone the next day. Um, and, and the trash. Oh, yeah, I'm worried about the trash now. Um, 16 trash cans. If you think about it, out on the street, if you think of about the wind, the dogs, the coons, and everything else knocking them over. There's nobody there to clean it up. It stays there until their cleanup people come in a day or two or three or whatever the case might be. It goes on and on and on and on. Uh, there's a whole lot more. Um, if, if you really had the oversight from an owner and the owner was there and they're renting, they've got a five-bedroom home, th four bedrooms, whatever it is, and they're there and they can screen them and they're permitting them to come into their homes. But that's not what this is all about when it gets to Airbnb. I'm sure there's some good people out there, but this is a for-profit for business. That's the way it is. Some people would like to have four or five of them, same thing, you know, just so they can pay some maintenance people to go around and pick up the trash, you know, and so forth. Uh, I'm surprised that there wasn't a major emergency, whether it be somebody was really ill or a fire or whatever it is. Uh, you know, because it's, it, 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 it's secluded and it's uh, kept out of the public view, except at night. You have no idea in the day, but at night, oh, does it come alive. It really does. So, anyways, that's what I experienced. I was there. Um, it was one, you, you, no one who rents on a uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. They only rent on a Friday night, Saturday night, or a Sunday night. And generally, they're not taking the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If they did take the Friday, it's to prepare for Saturday, and they are out of there on Sunday. That's what I witnessed. You'd have your hands full on this one. And you know we wouldn't be the only city. But uh, other people have had a lot more practice. You should learn from them, and let's just avoid a uh, real can of worms. It won't go away, I'm telling you that now. We'll be sitting up here 
everybody be mad and we'll have these ordinances and we'll feel protected. Oh, yeah, man, we got to live with it. You don't. We do. That's it. That's all I can tell you. Thank you. Oh, and your city manager. Oh, no, he should be up here really telling you it was all a lie because if he was there, where's our lawyer? Where's our lawyer? He should know. It's a business. It's not the getaway plan. It's a business. That's simple. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I know we have the folks who had signed up. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? That would be in the discretion of the commission, Mr. Chair. Um, commissioners, uh, would you allow? Absolutely, then, commissioners. Well, it's very distressing to hear the kind of stories that these gentlemen have shared. Uh, to take a calm neighborhood where people have known each other for years and create disruption and noise and trash is a terrible, terrible thing. And I agree with them. And we experienced that when we had our little home that we lived in and then outgrew and made a vacation home over off of McCullough. Uh, our vacation home business was going well. And then the lady next door to me, whom I'd known for years, passed away, an older lady. And that home became a rental, a long-term rental property. Then my elderly neighbor on the other side passed away, and the same man bought that home too. So I was a vacation home with a long-term rental on each side. The home on the right first was rented by college students. Those college students began to have parties just about every weekend. We tried to talk to them, and they were very rude to me. We av avoided for some months them disturbing my renters, who we rented to families only, just because we knew they would treat the property correctly. The neighborhood across the street also scolded them for blocking her driveway and making noise. And these, it was a house full of boys, I guess it was a frat house, they threw a bunch of used condoms in her front yard, beer cans, uh, bottles, and were very, very rude. And the house at the other side was all girls, and some interesting things happened between those two homes. I could no longer tell the people renting my home, who usually came with young children, that this was a quiet, family-friendly neighborhood because of these two long-term rentals on each side. And our reviews went down because people will always give an honest review and they said, it's too bad the Smiths are very nice and their home's lovely, but you might be up until four because of what's going on next door. And that ruined our business. So I just wanna say, it doesn't make sense. There's no logic to writing ordinances thinking or focusing only on one particular incident, one particular person who's mismanaged the business that they had. The man that was on each side of my home, that was a business. He had 20 homes like that, and he told me, the reason I get college students is their parents always pay the rent because they don't want their kids kicked out. So we were out of luck there. So. Uh, this must reflect the totality of what is possible with these homes, and I think the vast majority are very well managed. Because, as, you, as I've mentioned previously to this group, we have put probably $175,000 in this home that we propose to rent. I do not want anybody to abuse this property, uh, because that's, that's my retirement. And yes, it will be a business, but there won't be weeds, and there won't be noise, and I can bring neighbors from my previous neighborhood to stand here and tell you that what I'm saying is true. So for every bad story, I'm sure there's dozens of good ones. Thank you. 
Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, would anybody else, last chance, anybody else like to speak? Uh, please state your name and your address. <coughs> My name is Nancy McDermott, and I live at 100 East Paso Lane. And I'm here because I didn't know there was a, an Airbnb across the street. I wondered why there was all this incessant, what do you call it, those gas leaf blowers, I mean, it was crazy. I had been in that house for 30 years and nobody ever did that <laughs> because we had more trees than anybody else. It's at the bottom of the hill. So I was absolutely stunned when I found out why they were doing this constantly. I was monitoring because I thought either I'm going crazy or this is really happening. And so I monitored it, and I was just horrified because I thought, this is really happening, and I can't take it anymore. And sure enough, I found out that it was an Airbnb. Otherwise, I, I just honestly, I wrote the people that live, that own that property, which live next door. I don't know who they were. I just wrote a letter on behalf of the rest of the my neighbors and my family, and I said, dear neighbors, and then I <laughs> proceeded to say to them, um, this, I, a lot of us have been here for decades, and this has never happened before. Why are you doing this? You're ruining the character and the quiet, peaceful tranquility of this neighborhood. We moved here years ago. We sacrificed to buy into this place. And then, you know, it's being ruined by you. I had no idea that that was how it worked. But I just, you know, wanted to keep it that way. I thought, you know, I don't want to get personal, but something has to be done. And I thought, this is just untenable. I just, we just cannot take it. Spoke to the neighbors, they agreed. And so called, called the police, and they said, well, it's 85 decibels. Yes, it's 85 blaring decibels constantly. So I thought nobody else would put up with this. This is insane. I've put up with it long enough. Well, there has been nothing I could do about it. I found out, I f the way I found out that it was an Airbnb was I when I was talking to the neighbors. I said, are you sick to death of this? This is going, this is driving me crazy. It's driving my family crazy. My son works at ICU and he needs his rest and he's not getting it and I work from home and I can't even think because it's just so much blaring. The amplitude is absolutely brain numbing. So I absolutely, this is where I'm at. So I'm here to tell you that one of the unexpected problems that has come out of this Airbnb is this excessive noise. They do not let one leaf sit on the ground. And what I mean, we, we're under, we have so many trees. We have more trees than anybody, and we have leaves everywhere because we just, we just mulch them. That's the only way to get by. We just mulch our leaves. And this maniac, I mean, sorry, this person that's been hired by these people uh, just is over there constantly blowing every leaf. Now, I bet you haven't heard that one. I bet you haven't heard that one before. Have you? No. No. It's absolutely atrocious. It's unbelievable. And then, to top it off, you won't believe this, you will not believe this. I found out who owned it. Anybody know who I'm talking about? Our new alderman, Mr. May, and his partner, Mr. Lake. Is that a shocker or is that a shocker? I found out by accident when they sent those campaign cards. I looked at the address and I thought, oh, this is the pe these are the people I wrote to. I didn't know who they were. That's who they were. They're the owners. 
And I wrote them and told them and complained. I didn't even know it was them. I just said, dear me, I was very polite, but firm, that they're wrecking the neighborhood and the peace and tranquility that I've had for 30 years, they are ruining it. And guess what? Nothing changed. 16 times one month, 11 times last month. <coughs> I mean, it's just unbelievable. And that's all I can say. That's all I can say. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you for listening to me. I feel better. <laughs> Thank you. Thank so you, Ms. McDermott. All right. Um, anyone else? The time is a, uh, approximately 7.42 p.m. We are closing the public hearing. The time is still approximately 7.42 p.m. Agenda item number four, discussion and possible action on a recommendation to the City Council on amendments to Chapter 50 of the Code of Ordinances based on recommendations from the Zoning Review Committee. Commissioners, this is your time for open discussion. Commissioners, I'd like to go ahead and make a, just share a bit. I know that we can't uh, engage per se on the prior agenda item, but uh, under this, uh, the wealth of information that uh, is under this zoning review committee piece, um, last meeting, we opened this up and had this on the, on the agenda. And uh, we did advance forward uh, a section of this, uh, which happened to be a section on the short-term rental. Uh, that was advanced uh, forward to allow the city council to put it on their agenda. And unless I'm mistaken, I don't think that it was on their agenda the last meeting but we did make our recommendations in regards to that. And uh, in regard, well, based, I don't want to get into the last item, but in regards to that, we did attempt to move it forward. So um, any additional discussion by the governing body will have to take place there. Any changes that they want to make will come for that particular item under Zoning Review Committee as an example. So I just wanted to share that and bring that to light just one more time, the actions that we took last meeting. Uh, commissioners, again, this is your time for open discussion. I have um, a question about, I'm looking on the draft of, it's called the information section. Um, documents that the owners are required to provide. It's under required fees. Um, and then there's, oh, no, mine's not listed. It's on, it's the application, draft application, short-term rental permit application. And then there's a draft right beyond that called the information section. Keep these documents for your records. Right. Just sometimes things aren't always in order for everybody. <laughs> there are no page numbers, so it gets a little tricky. With, within the packet is the ordinance, and then behind the ordinance is the actual application. Um, the information I section. I don't remember seeing the section, and it's all highlighted on my yeah, mine. Too. mine. Um, the fee for late application, does that apply? I guess my question is, I don't remember discussing when late the application would apply, and if there's any notation on any of the information provided to the applicants on when they would be subject to a late application fee. I thought it was 
I think we give them a grace period, and then if people don't apply, then that's when this I failure? think that, that's as a result of the, the not complying and pulling the permits, um, okay. similar to what, what we have now with other permits, and I think um, okay. we captured that from last meeting. I think Ms. Pena had mentioned that as far as the double fee. Um, that's as a result if you didn't come in and actually um, sign up in time sign up and, and get an application and get an actual permit and we find out that you're operating out of compliance okay just like anything in residential permits or commercial and permits we do is it written anywhere in this the rest of the document I really only looked at kind of the highlighted new portions yes it is okay Yes, it is. Great, thank um, you. What, what, uh, although the commission voted at the November meeting, as the chair has said, um, to um, move this forward, it was moving it forward, provided that certain revisions were made, including that comment um, about the application fee. So one of the things that was done um, was uh, to add a phrase um, in the section, I think it was uh, formerly section 50-503, which says short-term rental permit registration fee and application. And so the, at the beginning of that paragraph, that section, the statement was added prior to renting real property as a short-term rental, an applicant shall do the application. So if someone is renting as a short-term rental without having followed the application process, then by definition, that's going to be someone who will be subject to the late application fee um, which was in accordance with um, uh, one of the recommendations made at the uh, November meeting. Um, uh, similarly, um, there were three or four other administrative changes that were made consistent with recommendations that came from the commission at the November meeting. And finally, um, on my final review, I noticed that the numbering sequence uh, was out of order. The numbering sequence where the original ordinance that the commission looked at started it with number 50-100. Um, that would have put it under the double A zoning district regulations. So I suggested to the city manager that we move the short-term rental provisions to a separate standalone section and begin the numbering with 50-100. Um, Sixteen, where it would fit in the sequence, um, uh, among other reasons, uh, besides getting it out of the, the where someone could construe it to only apply to the double A district, um, it also seemed to me that by setting it aside in its own specific section of the zoning ordinance would make it easier for both um, the governing body, this commission, and owners of potential short-term rental properties to see exactly where the city's regulations were located. Um, and I I if I may, Mr. Chairman, if, if, if the commission will indulge, um, there was one new bit of information um, that was not available to the commission um, at the meeting at the beginning of November on November 5th. And that information is that the um, third uh, district court of appeals of the state of Texas uh, last Wednesday on November 27th um, rendered an opinion in regard to the city of Austin's short-term rental ordinance and in their opinion struck down two significant sections of the Austin ordinance. Um, one of those sections is not relevant to Castle Hills because this commission did not act to restrict short-term rentals to only owner-occupied properties. In Austin, they had a type one uh, short-term rental, which was an owner-occupied short-term rental, like renting a bedroom to someone. Um, and they had a type two short-term rental, which was a rental of an entire property um, where the owner was not occupying it. And the Austin ordinance said that the type two short-term rentals uh, could no longer be done after, I believe it was December 31 of 2021. Uh, their ordinance was passed in 2016. Um, the Court of Appeals struck down that section um, on constitutional grounds. The other section that the Court of Appeals addressed uh, was a section where the city of Austin, in its short-term rental ordinance, prohibited 
weddings or other group type events at a short term rental and the court of appeals ruled that provision to be unconstitutional as a violation of both the first amendment to the United States constitution and a section of the uh, of article one of the Texas constitution both of which um, protect the right of assembly um, there are some there is one section um, in our ordinance uh, one section in the proposed ordinance and one section in the application um, that are implicated um, by this uh, appellate court decision. This appellate court decision is not final, just rendered seven days, six days ago. So both the, um, the, uh, the property owners who filed the lawsuit um, or the state of Texas, which intervened in it, or the city of Austin could bring this case uh, to the Texas Supreme Court. They could ask the Court of Appeals for a rehearing or they could go to the Supreme Court, ask the Supreme Court to consider this case. Um, to my knowledge, the Supreme Court has considered short-term rentals and regulation of short-term rentals by homeowners associations, but I don't believe there's a case directly on point in regard to a short-term rental ordinance <coughs> by a city. So that enhances the likelihood that the Supreme Court might consider it, but the Supreme Court accepts maybe 10% of the cases that it's asked to hear, the Texas Supreme Court. But the um, ordinance um, in what is now section 50-520 on page three of the proposed ordinance had a section that says that um, as an operational requirement, there shall be notification that all functions such as weddings, parties, or other gatherings are prohibited at the short-term rental excepting short-term rentals located in the G or H zoning district. And those are general business and um, even less intense, or excuse me, more intense zoning districts, G or H. Um, that effectively, this provision would prohibit someone using an Airbnb for the kind of events that Mr. Carter and Mr. Castagnana described, um, but that prohibition might be a violation of both the United States Constitution, First Amendment, um, and um, Section 27 of Article One of the Texas Constitution, and I did want to bring that to the attention of the Commission. <coughs> uh, as I said, this is um, very new um, uh, information, um, and we won't know whether any party is appealing, going to appeal this or take it to the Supreme Court, ask, even ask the Supreme Court to consider it, for probably 45 days, and if they do, then it, it would be on the Supreme Court's calendar um, in, in whatever stages the Supreme Court wants it to go, um, but could easily be a year or longer before we have a, a definitive ruling on whether what the Austin Court of Appeals did um, to the Austin Ordinance um, would be something the Supreme Court would agree with or not agree with. But again, I thought it was relevant to bring it to the commission's attention since it is so timely. Um, and um, I'd be glad to answer other questions from the commission if and, and when appropriate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Small. I um, do have one, so you might want to stay up there. Yeah, <laughs> what I was going to mention is that, um, first of all, Mr. Small, thank you for that information again. Uh, <clears throat> secondly, we did vote on this we made a recommendation to the governing body, the city council. Uh, with this information, when uh, they decide to put that on the agenda, I think that all of this information along any commentary or how the motion was made, uh, they'd be advanced forward. The city council governing body will be able to take all those things in account. And they would also like the public have the opportunity to review this meeting along with Mr. Schnall's comments and anything else that the city provides. Uh, but we have moved that forward. That, uh, again, that zoning review item as an example, uh, short-term rentals uh, move forward. So now it's in their hands after our recommendation. Uh, I'm sure, like, as I mentioned, sure we can discuss it, but I would, uh, I'm not sure what other commissioners think but I want to make sure that we keep our processes clean 
so once we advance and we have motions and we move them forward that there are already any actions or modifications that need to be made are made at that level since we already advanced it forward and I, I do believe mr. chairman that um, the other comments or recommendations made at the November 5th meeting um, mr. Rapley did incorporate into the final version of the uh, or what is right now the final version of the um, short-term rental um, ordinance uh, as approved by the Commission for recommendation to the City Council. Um, in addition um, to it ultimately being on a future agenda for the City Council, uh, the local government code in Chapter 211 does require that the City Council also hold a public hearing on the entire zoning ordinance, whether it's just the short-term rental part or the entire ordinance that has gone through review, um, first by the Zoning Review Committee and then by the prior Zoning Commission and then by your Zoning Commission, this Zoning Commission. Um, and so the other document that was circulated by Mr. Rampley is the entire red line showing all of the proposed changes that have been approved uh, piecemeal by this commission or a prior zoning commission um, and it would be appropriate under this agenda item um, for the commissioners if they had questions or comments um, to go ahead and make them and ultimately it would be appropriate um, for the commission to either move this entire ordinance forward to the city council or decide that this commission wants another look at various parts of it um, as you all will remember um, the prior zoning commissions had pretty much covered uh, to, to my understanding what was acceptable to this commission in in the areas other than um, the home occupations and the short-term rentals and you spent two or three meetings uh, working with mr. Rampley and with me on what y'all were looking for on home occupations there was a lot of input from Ms. Baker and Ms. Pena on that as I recall and then I think everyone, Mr. Herman, the chairman, Ms. Baker, Ms. Pena, Mr. Booth, and Mr. Herndon who's left, um, all had various recommendations which we tried to incorporate um, into the uh, proposed final version of the short-term rental ordinance. Um, but uh, putting on my hat as the retired chair of the Zoning Review Committee, we concluded our work three or four city managers ago and it would be appropriate to move this forward to get it to the City Council um, when you all are comfortable doing so, but frankly, sooner rather than later. Thank you. So, in light, Mr. Snell, in light of the Court of Appeals opinion, if it does go up to the Supreme Court, do you think that we have provided our city with an ordinance that will avoid them falling under an unconstitutional declaration because we've we've put restrictions on how many people you can have per room and parking and things like that and that I thought was in an effort to avoid having to say you can't have a wedding you can't have a party what we have said in our ordinance which is I think probably materially different than what Austin did is simply reference existing ordinances that you know you you know, a short-term rental operator must be in compliance with the zoning regulations, um, with um, our, our ordinances on uh, the from the International Build Property Management Code, or pro excuse me, Property Maintenance Code in regard to occupancy, um, uh, a future hotel occupancy tax ordinance, um, the swimming pool barrier requirements. Um, from the International Swimming Pool and Spa Code, the parking provisions in Chapter 44 of our ordinances, the nuisance provisions in Chapter 26, our garbage collection ordinance, um, all of those are spelled out. Um, um, and in addition, uh, primarily in response to the difficult situation that I think we all sympathize with that Mr. Carter and the other residents of South Winston Lane have described, um, in October of last year, the council did adopt a uh, broader, uh, more uh, enforceable 
um, amendments to the nuisance ordinance that would allow the city, um, if there were multiple offenses, um, to declare a property a nuisance generating property um, and require the owner to post a bond, among other things. Um, and so the city has responded uh, to that concern through the ordinances. Um, my direct answer to your question is no. I do not think with that provision I just read that prohibits um, weddings and other similar events in any short-term rental, I do not think that will pass constitutional muster. I am mildly concerned about the occupancy limits, but the Austin court didn't directly say those were illegal. They came close. They came close, but they didn't quite say that. Um, whoever would bring this case to the Supreme Court, which probably would be the city of Austin, whose ordinance was partially struck down, will frame the argument before the court. Um, and you know, my thinking is they will try to preserve as much of the ordinance as they can. Um, uh, the uh, Austin Court of Appeals decision is 18 pages long. That's long for an appellate court decision. It's not for a Court of Appeals decision, that's long. Not for a Supreme Court decision, but for a Court of Appeals decision, an 18 page opinion is long. Um, and it was written by the Chief Judge, the Chief Justice of that court. Um, notwithstanding that, um, our community is different from Austin. Our community is different from almost every other community. And we have the right, I think the city has the right to um, put whatever reasonable restrictions it thinks is appropriate in place. And if folks are um, unhappy or dissatisfied, there are methodologies <coughs> for them to uh, air those grievances. Um, but I, I do have a concern about the right of assembly language um, uh, as much as I sympathize with the, the neighbors who had to put up for far too long with a very difficult and unpleasant situation. Um, it, it, we all have to abide by the rules that have been set for us um, by the constitutions. So um, it's not our place to decide what the court would or should or could do. I think it's the place of this commission to decide what's right for our community. Um, if you want to keep in place this restriction against weddings and similar events and short-term rental properties that are in the residential districts, it would be valuable to state why and to, to show that the um, commission and the governing body respectively um, you know, thought about this and felt that um, whether it was because of the uh, nature of the neighborhood, because it's because the streets are so narrow, the streets are not curbed, the streets don't have sidewalks, um, things like that um, make it difficult to manage from a public safety standpoint an event that would have 30 or I think Mr. Uh, Councilman Yana said, um, uh, 20, JD, thank you, it would be a lot easier for me to pronounce, sir. Um, I did not write down the spelling and I'm lost without that. But you know, on, this, on my street, 25 or, 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 or 50 cars parked, you can't get down the street. I mean, we had an event when my son was in high school, we had 20 kids. The police came and asked us to move cars so they were parked in my driveway and get as many cars off the street as possible. And that was, probably 18 or 20 cars. Um, and most of the streets in Castle Hills, especially north of Loop 410, are narrow streets, not paved, and with no sidewalks. That could justify a reasonable restriction against someone having a large event. Um, I'm, not, I, I'm not really comfortable with us saying how many people can be in one of these rental homes, and um, Ms. Smith spoke to that already this evening. Um, the Austin court did make some comments about that, but they did not make a definitive finding that any restriction of that kind um, would not work. They came close um, um, in, the, in, the, in the part where they talked about the, um, uh, the, the getting rid of the, uh, the, of their declaring unconstitutional the provision that said that if it wasn't owner occupied, it had to basically go out of business in five years. 
and we don't have that provision here. It, that was something that was discussed, um, I think, uh, by the previous zoning commission and perhaps also by this zoning commission, and there really wasn't a sense that that was necessary or appropriate um, in our community. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Um, Mark and Ryan, you were uh, a couple of, I guess, residents that had ref made reference to you or the in correlation with the city of sorts. Um, under this agenda item, I'd like to, to ask of you, are there communications uh, on record with the city so that we have those? Well, in particular spoke? with uh, Mr. Castrojana's um, issue, um, I was intimately involved as well as Mr. Zamarone um, and our outside attorney on um, violations that occurred at this property over time. Okay. Um, and so we, we have documented uh, Mr. Zamarone brought uh, cases to municipal court. Um, and again, um, we had um, uh, engaged our, our municipal court outside attorney um, with, with uh, representatives from Mr. Castrojano uh, on this matter. And so again, at the end of the day, it was since re resolved. Um, the uh, nuisance ordinance that was in effect um, was a little early because I think it was just merely, um, I think it was re adopted, Louis, I think um, just a few months in when some of the problems that started racking up as far as violations at this particular property occurred. Um, but at the end of the day, um, now that this is fully in place and as Mr. Schmall mentioned, um, stipulated in the ordinance under chapter 26, I think Ms. Baker had asked us to categorize that as nuisances pretty much covers and gives us that ordinance for an enforcement tool moving forward. But in regards to that particular property, we have uh, documentation as far as what transpired there. Okay. And again, under this particular agenda item, I ask that question, uh, and again, to share with the commissioners that as we move forward in looking at anything else, that uh, as we have with other scenarios, that if we need to pull some information uh, as some reference points uh, to take from, in our reviews to make recommendations that we do have that information and data going forward. So thank you very much. I just wanted to double check on that for this commission. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, any other communication? Anyone? I'd like to uh, also uh, remind, and again, samples only, uh, it's just I, you know, when someone's looking to make a motion or whatever it may be, just again at the uh, very beginning when many of us were uh, nominated and put uh, on this commission. Uh, anyway, sample is I move to approve, not approve, take no action, table to uh, a particular date or when, a particular month, uh, then you could read that particular agenda item. And again, this is only a sample uh, to avoid any stress or confusion uh, is everyone up here trying to do the best we can uh, for our residents as uh, making recommendations uh, as a commission. But again, I'd like to state that each commissioner can decide on their own method. So uh, we are on agenda item uh, number four. I can reread it again or anyone else? Chairman, can I make a point on what Mr. Schmall had mentioned? Uh, about moving this. Hang, hang on one Excuse second, me. Ryan. Yes, Chairman, as, as far as moving this forward to council, um, and as Mr. Uh, Schnall alluded to, the posting requirements, um, at the last meeting, um, I went through and consolidated the chapter 50 and incorporated short term as uh, advised by this, uh, this zoning commission, uh, and then I took care of all the posting requirements um, in case that you did want to move this forward for the next council meeting on December 10th uh, because I got the idea that um, you were at a point where you were ready to not only advance the short-term rental but incorporate it into Chapter 50, which I did, make the necessary changes as redlined in this entire document and ready for you know council's eventual review uh, at this point. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any communications uh, from commissioners? 
I can't hear myself when I put this thing on, but I'll try. Um, I think a lot of the concerns that you guys have raised tonight have been addressed in the, in the draft that's presented tonight here. I think um, a very important aspect of all this is the nuisance, or, nuisance ordinance that was passed uh, previously, and I, I don't know if you want to get up and tell them a little bit more about the, um, the arm at which you have to take care of things that do get out of, out of hand. That way it will give these people some kind of a frame of reference to what, would you be willing to do that? Just tell them what's different from now versus before. This guy is really good about this stuff, by the way, he says. So. <laughs> I actually reversed myself backward and forward on what you're asking about today. So uh, basically what we did as, as a result. Excuse me. You might introduce yourself to everyone. Okay. My name is Louis Amron. I'm a trade compliance officer, and I'm also the, assi the interim assistant to the city manager. Uh, and I'm got some awareness of the situation that occurred on, on South uh, Winston Lane. Uh, because of this particular situation and other ongoing situations within, within the code realm, uh, it was uh, my suggestion was also the suggestion of the outside attorney that we get together something that other cities had having to do with uh, nuisance generating properties. And so that was addressed and that was passed in uh, uh, October of, of last year. And uh, basically this gives me, it gives the code officer, whoever my replacement will be, uh, if I do get this position. Excuse me one second, Mr. Zumeldorf. Can everybody, the audience here, okay? I know that this was, okay. I just want to make sure because uh, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Herman wanted to make sure that everybody Yeah, I think it. it's important. And now I've, and the reason I, I'd like to preface this by, the reason I think it's important that he kind of describes the difference between what, what, the city didn't have much of an ability to do a whole lot about the complaints that you people have raised um, previous to what he's fixing to describe to you. So now that we have an arm which to, to uh, you know, get these people in trouble for breaking noise violations and things like that, he will explain the differences. So that I think it will address a lot of your concerns um, based on what he's saying. So succinctly, the thing was, you know, th there was never really like a three strikes, strikes if you will a three strikes and you're out kind of ordinance and there is now. It's three strikes within 60 days and a certain provision occur, a certain penalties occur. Seven within uh, six months and those penalties occur. So the three is not the net, the seven is the net and you have a short time in which that occurs. Prior to that, if we had a three strikes you're out type situation or I had three calls to a particular uh, property, it was the same process. They would get a letter of violation. They would come to court. They would come to some agreement with a prosecuting attorney. Whether that was followed through or not is really irrelevant. That's where the process ended. And if the situation reared its ugly head again, then I would move again down the same path over and over and over ad nauseum. Things aren't getting fixed. There doesn't seem to be a penalty for the, for the, uh, the recidivism on this particular type of, of uh, uh, violation. And so the outside attorney decided that we probably needed this. So when we did, I get together and craft this, and it was passed by the governing body uh, last year. Uh, there's provisions in that, that nuisance generating code now, that make it uh, rather poignant to the property owner that that type of behavior will stop and it's sooner rather than later. And it does hit the property owner who is generating or allowing those nuisances to be generated. It hits them uh, where it counts, quite frankly. And so I think, uh, at least my feeling is, that if this ever rises to the level where this ordinance needs to be used, it'll catch the attention of the individual who owns the property in short order. Do you have the ability to stop it now versus before you didn't, or is this something where they're just gonna get caught in an endless cycle where there's no real um, penalties? Well, sir, on honestly, I can't answer that because 20 years as a police officer, one thing I, I did learn is that you cannot modify human behavior. So they're going to do whatever they want to do and it doesn't matter what the cost. If they have a high tolerance for pain and they don't mind paying arbitrarily, let's just say $10,000, then that behavior is going to continue. Do I have the mechanisms in which to catch someone's attention perhaps a little bit more? The answer is definitely, definitely. You don't want that uncomfortable, you don't want to cross that. Uncom uncomfortable threshold, no matter who you are. You could be an up and up person who's running a nice Airbnb, it just happens to get 
a bad roll of the dice three times in 60 days, but it still kind of gets your attention. Um, so, Commissioner Pena? I don't have a question, I have a comment. Um, I'm very concerned about my neighbor's well-being and them living comfortably and peaceably in their homes. I want them to know that this particular issue was pretty much decided before this commission took office. We're just modifying what the previous commission had discussed and had decided upon. We're just amending and making stricter rules. But after hearing y'all tonight, my heart goes out to you because I wouldn't want to be in your situation. I would not want to be woken up in the middle of the night, not even once a year. And my concern is, and it's totally out of our hands, is that when you make the phone call to the police department and they go out there, that there are repercussions that people get arrested and that they go to court and, they're, and their case is not dismissed. You know, I've had a situation uh, several years in the past where we reported a neighbor and um, he came over here and, I mean, it took years to get him, uh, to get them to send him a letter. And then when they did and he came over here, he talked his way out of it. So how, what did that get us? I mean, maybe we should develop a, a committee where the B&B &B owners meet with the police chief and discuss their concerns with the police chief and uh, maybe attacking it from that side. But I don't think that we constitutionally have the right to prohibit them from having an Airbnb. And so our hands are, are pretty much tied, but don't think that we're sitting up here not caring and not listening because we are definitely listening and we all care. We would not want to be in your shoes. I think, I think it's important to note that right now there's no law. And so that you're experiencing Mr. Carter, there's no law, there's no ordinance. There's Mr. nothing, we have nothing. I don't think you can engage Oh, uh, someone just just, just so you know in generalities. Okay, so in light of what our code enforcement officer has said, you know we now have new ordinances that are in place. Right now, we're trying to draft the best um, short-term rental ordinance that we can, based on feedback that we've got from other cities, based on feedback from residents. Um, trying to make them as advantageous to the homeowner that is wanting to rent their home out short-term. Um, you know, we're, I think we're, we're there, to be honest. I think we've worked on this really hard. Um, but I think it is just important to note that right now, I think it's more helpful to the city to have ordinances in place for everyone's concerns. They, I think it addresses everyone's, whether it's someone that's for or against, because they're doing it anyway. And I think that we, we're in a, we're in a different kind of world now. So we have, we have to make, we have to play the hand we're dealt, and we know that people are doing them anyway, so I think it's better for us to have ordinances in place that, uh, that set the rules. That way, if they are broken, there's a penalty for it. Thank you, Commissioner Herman. Um, again, I just wanted to reiterate, uh, we did have a vote on that, a motion was made, et cetera, last, we did miss you last meeting, Commissioner Herman. Um, I think uh, who had uh, led, I think there was a motion led by uh, Ms. Baker, and we thank you, Commissioner Baker, and uh, seconded by Commissioner Pena uh, regarding that. So any additional information, should anybody else uh, happen to hear the um, audio or video of this, uh, and I state that as uh, any of the public or the governing body, when that is put on the agenda by the city council and the governing body, um, hopefully they will make some time 
to go ahead and review or there's documentation additional documentation produced as they make a decision uh, for the city of castle hill so thank you very much commissioner herman um, commissioners anybody else on this particular agenda item again it's discussing and possible action i'd like to move this um, draft document forward as it's presented and um, ask it that it be moved forward for the city council's consideration commissioners commissioners would that be okay sure. yes mr carter as i said earlier i haven't seen or been able to look at it but i'm a very detailed person the 22 years that i've known this gentleman here mr snow he's always had his head screwed on tight and he's run a tight ship all of the things that he was just talking about are those in this amendment like the lanes that we live on that are 21 feet and not 31 feet all that's in there okay i'm good <laughs> There's a whole list, just to be clear, I'm telling um, count, or the uh, And I wasn't sure if we could give you that zoning. or show you that. I think Mark. Mr. Schnall, did you want to make some comments before we? This, until, until, until this commission acts to do something, to, and Ms. Baker has made a motion, right. and we allowed Mr. Carter to make a point of order, but I think that before we go forward, it would be appropriate for the chair to see if there's a second to Ms. Baker's motion. Okay. I'll, I'll second. second. Okay, so Ms. Pena has seconded Ms. Baker's motion. Okay. Um, I think the answer to Mr. Carter's point of order is that the proposed uh, short-term rental ordinance incorporates by reference the various provisions that were discussed in my previous presentation and is amplified by our code enforcement officer in regard to chapter 26 on nuisance, nuisances. So our, um, our sign ordinance, our occupancy limitations from the International Property Maintenance Code, um, the future hotel occupancy tax, the swimming pool uh, barrier requirements from the International Swimming Pool and Spa Code that the city has adopted, um, the parking ordinances of the city, um, the garbage collection ordinance of the city, all of those are incorporated by reference into the short-term rental um, provision. Um, and um, I, I think that's probably a more accurate re response to Mr. Carter because it doesn't say our, our, our roads are 20 feet paved instead of, and, and 60 foot right away with 20 to 30 feet paved. But um, that's something that can be incorporated um, as part of the findings by the city council when it acts formally um, on the recommendation that comes from this commission. Um, having been through this process before, um, uh, as, as then the chairman of the zoning commission, um, I presented the zoning commission's recommendations on the revisions to chapter, at that time I think it was chapter 31, it's now chapter 50 over the course of two or three city council meetings. So the council did this r council action and review um, in smaller pieces rather than try and take the whole, and I didn't count the pages and I know Mr. Rapley has page numbers on <laughs> here, 73. Um, uh, so um, it's a long ordinance. I'm assuming that the current city council will probably also take it up um, in chronological order, but probably not all at one time at one meeting. Um, could have a special meeting just for this purpose. Again, notice will be published um, uh, and of course put on the website um, and notice of a public hearing will be published uh, so that members of the public, both those who are in favor and those who are not in favor of anything in the amended ordinance We'll have an opportunity to speak, um, and um, so I hope that information is, is helpful. Thank you, Mr. Schnall. Uh, we do have a motion on the table. We have a first. We have a. Uh, we also have a second. All in favor?
time is approximately 8.27 p.m. Agenda item number five, discussion on potential additions to the recommended changes to chapter 50 of the Code of Ordinances. Well, again, this is a discussion. I think we uh, just re retired that at this point for the work that we've done on that. Any other uh, comments? Again, commissioners, this is your time for open discussion. Um, would we be allowed, Mr. Small, would we be allowed to assess or, um, yeah, I guess the words assess, a penalty for the homeowner that has had more than two offenses? looking um, to see if there is a penalty provision um, or where there is a penalty provision because I know there is one in the zoning ordinance. Um, and so let's see if we can find that quickly. Ah, section 50-5. Um, anyone who fails to comply with any provisions of the the zoning chapter, um, et cetera, et cetera, upon conviction is guilty of a misdemeanor um, and shall be fined as provided in section 1-71 of the Code of Ordinances. I don't, do not have section, our, our uh, chapter one, section 17 um, of the uh, section 1.17 um, in front of me. Uh, typically that section would provide that the a municipal judge has the uh, discretion to set the fine. Certain zoning violations can be fined up to $2,000, although typically the municipal court fines are in the range of $1 to $500. Um, the judge can take into account uh, multiple violations, but it's really discretionary with the municipal court judge. Um, uh, at a future meeting, um, the commission can put on an agenda a specific concern about addressing the penalty provision um, and that would be the appropriate time to do so. I, I, I think it would be important to let the public know specifically what the zoning commission is concerned about, give the public an opportunity to speak at a public hearing before this commission <coughs> and to, to help you all um, reach a decision. Um, and I think the city manager can make a note um, that there may be a concern about having the commission at a future meeting examine the penalty provisions. Thank you, Mr. Small. Uh, any other commissioners' uh, comments? I'd just like to uh, recap a bit and thank you all for all of your hard work and attention to uh, details we do our very best to uh, try to help our residents in the city of Capitol Hill. Again, this zoning commission makes recommendations. That is our role is to make recommendations to the governing body, the city council. So uh, again, I just wanna say thank you and uh, all of our city, city team. So thank you gentlemen very much and the communication uh, from our uh, residents. Nothing else I heard. Um, commissioners, uh, I request a motion to uh, adjourn, please. First. Who wants it? Who wants it? Got a first, I've got a second. The time is approximately 8.31. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>